How do y'all welcome back to Mamiya, a shared illusion of the world's end? Today we will be starting with Kikuchi Ryo's side today. We finished Tojo and Morichika's conjoined, kind of conjoined uh, sides, and we were left off with um, a very interesting, a very interesting ending. And I'm still thinking about what that means. I want to think about it. I'm still thinking about what it means. Howdy, Gabriella. Welcome. How are you doing today? You are just in time. Oh, hold on a second. I need to add the chat to my screen so I can see it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out who that Natsume is that we saw at the end of the end of the last stream. Maybe if, when I continue to play a little bit, I might get some more ideas. But, oh, I just had dinner too. I just ate um, not too long ago. Okay. There we go. Here's the, here's the game. I don't know. I'm, I'm still... I'm still thinking of who... who that Natsume is and why we don't remember anything about it. Okay, load this save. Kikuchi. I did. It was nice. I had some vegetables with some chicken, um, rice, and then also there was some sli um, slices of pizza that I had as well. Um, hopefully you're eating something that's filling as well. Right. Mamiya's existence. What was Mamiya like in this world? The people from the pink house were at the funeral. But Mamiya obviously still exists and is stronger than before. What was the Mamiya that 1999 and still in 2012. The beginning, sad daydream. Ryo? <clears throat> you woke up! Finally! Sleep when we get home, okay? I was sleeping? Yeah, were you tired because of the funeral? No, I'm fine. Let's go home. Okay, but there's someone sleeping next to you. Huh? Is it Suo? He twisted his body to the other side. Yes, it is Suo. There he saw a man with, ble with messy sky blue hair. friend of yours? Nope! Is he breathing? I'll check his po- Ah! The horizon suddenly became warped. What is this deja vu? He thought. He almost lost his balance as a wave of sensations came over him. Oh, also let me turn the desktop audio on so y'all can hear. A pain and a storm. A prayer and a call. <coughs> Through the dizziness, he rolled up the man's drenched sleeve and touched his wrist. Uh, uh, that was a good nap. Wait, huh? Who, who are you? Doesn't matter. A nobody. The man didn't seem fully awake yet. He looked into the distance like there was none on his mind. He had a simple look on his face, but there were hints of childishness in it. I feel like I've seen him before. Ryo thought. You, am, you an amnesiac or something? Hmm. This is curious. Since... 
I'm assuming this is supposed to take place right after the funeral again, right? Just like all the other times we've played this story. But this time he remembers uh, Suo Keito as if he has memories from the other timelines in this one. Like he shouldn't, ha this should be no reason he has deja vu, you know, unless he remembers Suo Keito, me and Suo Keito in a different timeline. Maybe that had, maybe that's the effects of the true course being set and then it being forcibly erased with the red ink, forcibly rewritten with the red ink. I don't think I, oh, goodness gracious, I need to turn my phone off, goodness, okay. I don't think I am. I don't know why I'm here though. Why are you here? Dio almost said that he felt the exact same way, but then he shook the idea out of his head. It didn't make any sense. Um, oh, wait, weren't you at the funeral? Huh? You were at Natsume's funeral too? Yes, but wait, how did I end up at the beach? Achoo! What? Why am I all wet? It's so cold. Here, dry yourself. A towel? Thank you. You're such a nice person. The smile and the soft look in the man's eyes, man's eyes feels strangely nostalgic. Adieu, thought. I wouldn't say so. Surely some sand must have gotten to his eyes. As Kikuchiryo wiped his eyes, he began to tear up. He didn't rub his eyebrows again and again. The immense waves of fate were subdued by a mysterious feeling of relief. I'm so okay, to. I take it that you knew Natsume as well? We were in the same class. That was the only reason I was invited. Can I ask for your name? I want to wash the towel and give it back to you. Kikuchiryo, just leave it somewhere around here. I'll pick it up. Hey, Ryo! Let's come back tomorrow, too! You'll be here again tomorrow? Ryo! Go see a doctor. Midori, we're leaving. The man smiled as he held the towel, had hints of a boy's innocence. I'm so glad I... <clears throat> I'm so glad I got to meet one of Natsume's classmates. It was so familiar. Ryo thought... This is an interesting, um, I was going to say something. I, I didn't know if it was going to be reoccurring, reoccurring, um, being a reoccurrence, I guess. Um, but it's interesting so far that we have Dio's inner thoughts narrated. Like, it's like I'm reading a novel, you know, it's like in quotation marks. And then it's like the character's thought, you know. This is interesting. Um, we're getting a lot of... I don't know. I'm not used to this. This is a different way of telling the story because I don't think we did this a lot. I don't think we got the inner, the inner, the, the, the inner dialogue um, in the previous, in the previous um, stories. That man. So okay to in the sea as a backdrop. The sea made a storm brew in Kikuchiryo's chest and he had no idea why. Suo, huh? This was the first he had ever said the name. Yet for some reason, it felt like he had said it many times before. Mmm. Mmm. I had so much fun at the beach today! Remember to wash your hands when we get home. Race you there! Midori, watch out for traffic! I looked at her back as she ran off. Natsume. Yo, race me! Come on, start running! Okay, sure. I'll catch up in a sec. Ah, you're so fast! I grabbed Midori and looked up at the sky. The gray clouds in the distance drained the color out of the city. It didn't matter to me if the world ended. 
my existence was entirely too minuscule for me to perceive matters of that scale. I already had my hands full of protecting what was right in front of my eyes. My, exist my existence alone didn't mean much in the grand scheme of things. I still, never, I still never know who's talking right now. <clears throat> um, my sins? I'm not sure what to say to that. We all woke up every day and went through our, or through our unchanging daily lives. Yet none of us actually felt like the world was going to end. You're asking this far too late. I've been bearing this cross for as long as it... Long, wait, I've been bearing this cross for so long, it became part of my spine. Just like I still didn't know my purpose for being here. Even so, if you, of all people, would insist I tell you everything, the days went by without much difference. Then I will tear open the skin, force my hand into, into the flesh, and bear it all bear it all to you well I did nothing but live through them will that satisfy you mamia and so I went to sleep yet again mamia a shared illusion of the world's end the theme song again Overflowing sea, overflowing salt water, a gray sea, and a dull man. His throat was tensed up, and there was gravel in his bitter taste in mouth. Ryo saw Su standing there. He was looking at him with empty eyes. What was he holding, and how long had he had been hiding it? He had to take it away and protect him. Oh, is this wait? Is this after the original ending? Like, what happens after that? S oh. He had to protect this guy, but... I get it. So... So... Hey. Why was the blood coming from his stomach? Oh, okay. This is... This, this does take place after that. Okay, just we only got a small s s snippet, not that much. Daybreak slash after dark. The sea of the year, 1999 or 2012, no way to tell which was calm. The short-lived winter sun made its surface glisten. Here you go! A donut. Eat it. Th thank you. When the Kikuchi siblings went to the sea, they once again found Suo Keito collapsed there. Interested, he's always collapsed. The confused brother and the energetic, and the energetic sister. 
made the tall student wake up and give a give him a donut. They had on them. Through Kato's fingers as he brought the donut to his mouth were rankly and numb with cold. It's so good. Oh yeah. Thank you for giving me the towel. You can have a back now. Man, why are you even sleeping there? Hmm. I guess you can say I'm just waiting for something new. Hmm? Come on, don't give me irrelevant answers like that. Don't you think that while a normal everyday life might be pleasant, it eventually loses its novelty? Man, you could have died. Stop acting like you don't know the danger. Ow! Yeah, I guess I should say I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. But I feel like it was predestined. You're saying that even though you could have died? I mean, the world's gonna end soon, you know? Huh? Nostradamus's prophecy. It was actually supposed to, it was actually supposed to end in July. Okay. So this should be a tale that um he's from 1999 because that prophecy relates to the year ending in 2000 when that has already passed and Kikuchiryo will probably might be familiar with the Mayan calendar theory. But it turns out it was a miscalculation. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is the year 2000. I mean, well, to, you know, it's, it's, it's been past that. But it turns out it was a miscalculation and it's actually gonna end the moment it becomes the year 2000. Oh, does he not know? He might not. He might not even know which year it's supposed to be right now. Two thousand. But wait, what year is it? <laughs> okay, so they don't. They don't address. They don't address it. Huh? What? Well, it doesn't matter, does it? It's gonna end anyway. Yeah. <laughs> won't have room for dinner but you had two no fair well you're small <laughs> I'm in my growth spurt I'm allowed to um I'm in my growth spurt too you're actually pretty cheeky huh here you can have half <laughs> thank you so much it's because you're so blessed huh if you're giving it all just to make it through the day, you wouldn't even have time to feel bored. It's good. It's a good problem to have. Is that why I seek out the extreme? I wouldn't know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you mad. It's just that I've never met anyone like you. Like me? Finding those words cold and prickly, he prepared to close off his heart. Excuse me. So an honor student like you never met a person this rough, huh? He uttered words filled with despair. No! I mean, I meant that I've never met anyone so straightforward and nice in a noble kind of way. Huh? Though he was somewhat irritated, Kikuchiryo could feel it clearly. This clueless younger man found him enviable. Oh, you have a good brother. As an only child, I'm a bit jealous. He didn't know the boy much, but his words touched his heart as an elder brother. What's with this guy? Does he ha even have a sense of danger? Your fault. You have a good Midori. This man looked really helpless to him. He was a big guy, sure, but the way he looked at things felt off. Who even described people as noble? It's like he was just born. Dio thought. And if he believed Dio was nice, he wanted to be as good as he wanted to be as good to him as he could. Aww. Kikuchiryo took a notebook from his bag and tore out a page. He then ran the pen over it before folding it up. 
so I have this letter. Uh, what? When Yo pushed the paper onto him, Suo could do little to hide his confusion. Give me a response the next time we meet. I, I, is this a letter? Um, this should help with your boredom a little, right? The man smiled like an overgrown, overgrown sunflower. <laughs> an over, overgrown, goodness. Overgrown sunflower. How does an overgrown sunflower smile? <laughs> I guess it's supposed to be radiant, like it's a radiant sun and smile. Yes, thank you. I'll do my best to think of a good response. Dio felt that he had to keep this child from turning into a balloon and floating away. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how does a sunflower smile? Kikuchiryo daily life was a repeating chain, repeating chain of routines. When his part-time job was over, he went to pick up Midori before going home and having dinner for two. This harmonious time with just the two of them was the only time he could find respite. Ah! Hey, I was watching that! Why'd you turn it off? Huh? S sorry Turn it on again! No, that's enough TV for today. Brush your teeth and go to bed. But I'm not sleepy yet, so why? Drop the attitude. I said that's enough TV. You're being mean. Just do as I say. Midori was watching a simple documentary-like show. For some reason, Dio couldn't bear watching it today and turn it off right away. Okay. But man, I didn't think it'd last this long. He expected a grumbling state to recover after a night of sleep, but it had turned out that it hadn't. Oh, oh no, oh. She wanted an answer even after she woke up, and Ryo had to go through a loop where he put on her socks only for her to take them off. It was a messy morning. Man. Midori had a strong radar for things that were off, and she could instantly tell when someone was lying. He himself didn't know what he was feeling, and when she kept pestering him to put it, that feeling to words, he went and shouted at her to cut it out. Uh-oh. I guess I just ran away. Even though he raised his voice, Midori didn't cry and just glared at him. It was like she was better at not running away than him. This is partially on her, too. Why did she decide to be so stubborn now, of all times? I'll make sure to buy lots of bell peppers and eggplants on the way home. <coughs> Excuse me. Holding back his urge to run, he endured the boring classes. But then, while class was still in session, a do the door opened up and a murmur went through the students. Kikuchi, go to the staff room immediately. What is it? Someone from the police. Someone from the police wants to have a word. Have a word with you. The police? Why the police? Huh? The police. That foreboding word made his mind come to a halt. He had dealt with them a bunch of times, but this was the first time they actually come to the school. Overcome by fear, he went through a door to the staff room, a place he rarely ever visited. Oh, <laughs> okay. Samajima. It makes sense now, I guess. Hello. I was just told about you. I am Officer Samajima Satoru. I'm 27 years old. My hobby is lifting. I like eating caviar and dislike salmon roe. This man, claiming to be an officer, was so absurd that Ro didn't even know how to feel. He extended his long, slender arm for a handshake. Samajima jump scare. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Dio really, really didn't want to get involved with this man. But with the teachers waiting on him, he had no choice but to accept the handshake. Reluctantly, he took the hand that seemed to, that seemed like a ledge sculpture. Let's get along, Ryo. 
The moment the man shook his hand, all the hairs on Dio's body stood up. No, 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 no. His instincts were telling him that this man was bad news, that he should run away from him. I gotta run, but I can't. I gotta run, but I can't. Dio thought, his mind going in circles. Run! Kikuchiro. The hand cut the hole on him, and the arm sprung like a bow. Ah. May I ask what you were doing last night? N nothing. A anyway, I've got stuff to do today. It has nothing to do with. Why, though? What did they do? Kikuchi Midori is waiting at the station. <laughs> Midori? Midori? Huh? Why would he say that name? Would you mind accompanying me there? Duo's entire body was racked by a chill. They made him feel like he was holding a guillotine blade. We brought Kikuchi Midori in because... Wait. We brought Mi Kikuchi... We brought Kikuchi Midori in because she was the first one to discover a body. Oh. Is wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is Suo Kato supposed to be dead? But he appeared to them alive for some reason? What? Okay. Oh, she went there by herself, though. She came to the police box all by us. She came to the police box all by herself to report having seen a person collapse on the ground. The officer on duty first believed to be a prank, but since she came alone, either way, since the girl was far too stubborn, she went to the location she described, and sure enough, a man was found lying in the grove where she led the, our officer to, Grove. Not the beach. Intr oh, hmm. Grove, not the beach. Hmm. Grove? That means a forest, right? Who would be in the forest dead? Said officer called an ambulance, but the man was already dead. That's it. I don't think this is Suo. Grove. We felt that questioning her alone wasn't enough. So I was called over as her guardian. Ah, Ryo! Hearing that young voice made him turn around and he saw Kikuchi Midori sitting on a chair and swaying her legs. Seeing her happily drinking apple juice made him completely relax. Midori, thank goodness. Putting aside your emotional reunion, may I ask you a few questions? About the body? What makes you think I know anything? Still, though, the first witness, eh? The man moved his wild like limbs and spoke in the same song tone. You siblings are truly alike. Truly are alike. What are you talking about? Oh, you don't have to remember it now. It'll probably come back to you as we talk. Your sister is currently undergoing a c emotional health examination with a, with a female officer. We were told that she's calm, so do not worry about her. We will be recording this just in case. Are you fine with that? Sure. The light on the desk projected their shadows onto the wall. Then let us begin. Oh, Samajima CG. <laughs> we haven't seen many um, Samajima CGs. Always has his eyes closed, no matter what. Kikuchi Midori found the body at 9 a at 9 in the morning. She arrived at the police box at 10.11, and the officer found the man's body at 10.56. After laying all that, Laying out all that, the man placed a photo on the desk. Do you know this man? Okay, he doesn't know this man. Okay, so it's a man that Kikuchi wouldn't recognize. 
Hmm. I don't know, my only thought would be the Natsume that is, um, <laughs> like, the alternate Natsume that we met. I guess he would look different enough to be unrecognizable. Especially if he, saw, he went to Natsume's funeral, he shouldn't be a new dead body in the forest. So, maybe it's that, maybe he's seen this, um, Natsume, Natsume 2.0. Hmm. I don't know, maybe it's someone that we, maybe it's, maybe someone we haven't met yet, though. Okay. <laughs> as soon as I say that, it's revealed that it's someone random. Okay. Well. This is Masaki Hashida, a 64-year-old factory worker. Okay, well. I don't know him. Midori probably doesn't either. Oh? I imagine if it was someone she knew, she'd throw a tantrum like you couldn't imagine. There's no way she reported to police. Samajima, Samajima nodded and then opened up a map and pointed at it. Why was Midori in this grove all by herself? Are you familiar with this area? Yeah, it's one of her usual haunts. So she goes there regularly, but why? Because it's teeming with pretty bugs and mushrooms. Dory's really good at finding things that are special. Does that apply to dead bodies as well? <laughs> she has a good eye and is sensitive to things that stand out. She often finds people lying on the ground. When she tells me to, when she tells me about them, I go check. And it's usually just drunkards or sick people. This must have been the first time it was a dead body. Is this also your first time seeing a corpse? I've never even saw the body she fa- No. I don't mean the body your sister found, but the body you discovered in the back alley behind the construction site. Huh? The faint light shone on his hands. Is that a product of one of his scuffles? Has he killed someone? I don't think he's killed nobody yet. Do you not remember? You were the first witness, Kikuchirio. What are you talking about? The tasteless wallpaper irritated his nerves. Wasn't it Midori? Oh, wait. Okay, 2003 though. 2003, we know who died in 2003. It was, um... Suokato. Did he find Suokato's body? Interesting. Oh, okay. She was. Today, anyway. But I'm talking about 2003. 2003? That's so long ago. Is it really... Has your inner clock moved even a little bit since then? Since then, do you ever have violent urges welling up within you? Excuse me, you try to accuse him of the, being the one that killed him. Do you? That's none of your business. When had they begun? Huh? High school? Middle school? No, they are older than that. This evil flower bloomed in the middle of your elementary school years, did it not? He would never, yes, he would never kill someone unless he um, was corrupted by Mamiya. Yeah. <laughs> but on his own, he would never, he would never do something like that. Was he claiming that Dio had this rage since he was about as old as Midori? No! I don't remember anything like that. Are you, were you able to restrain the overflowing violence? I, I was trying not to raise my hand and yet blood sticks to your skin by itself. Giving and receiving pain, death and violence. It all, it all still sticks to you and you can't wash it away, can you? 
<sighs> Dior was sweating bullets, buckets. The familiarity of this man, the similarity between them was something he couldn't afford to notice. Do you remember? First witness, Kikuchi Dio. Samajima slid a photo on the desk. Masaki Ashida, a 64 year old fact um, a 64 year old factory worker. Do you find him familiar? Shut up! Unable to enjoy this any longer, he punched the desk, throwing the photo off. That will be all. <sighs> Thank you for cooperation. Midori wanted to have her fingerprints taken, and she was given some reward money before being let go. She wanted to buy sweets with it, and so they went and did just that. And when they came back home, they both had dinner and slept like logs. <sighs> that was when Dio remembered the man at the beach. What if he had been waiting for them the whole day? I did him dirty. He felt like he had to apologize. And that was exactly what he had to do when he met that innocent man again. There's no mistake in it. If this was Samajima from 1999, this couldn't have happened. He showed himself with the appearance as a 27-year-old. And it was reasonable to assume that he had his memory since 2012 when he was supposed to be 40. So he's 40 years old right now. Okay. Oh, what a mess. 2000, the year that followed 1999. I don't know what happened in the story after they devoured Mamiya's flesh. However, Samajima thought that it was trying to meet with Kikuchiryo despite knowing everything. He still hadn't appeared, but the same couldn't but the same could probably be said about Arisugawa Osamu. He most he would most likely show himself before Kikuchiryo. He would want to see what happened to the Mamiya he instilled. Wait. Why is it Samaji Masato do? Wasn't it Arisugawa Osamu who instilled Mamiya into Kikuchiryo? Why did Samaji Masato appear before him? This order of appearances couldn't have been a coincidence. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. Guess what Tojo? Tojo met only met Mayuri after he had already met up with um um what's the name? Toma. Uh when they went all went to dinner together that one night. That was the first time he met him in the story. Met her in the story. Morichika Haruki, I'm assuming that I don't remember exactly when he met Mayuri again. Um but I, I guess he did. Uh, yeah, he did meet Mayuri before he met Toma again. Okay. Interesting. So, Samajima is showing up first. Instead of Arisugawa. Hmm. But I'm talking about 2003. What is the relationship between Samajima Satoru and Kikuchiryo? Hmm. Are we going now? Good job today. Be careful on your way home. Sure. Man, it sure is cold at night. He left his job, the one he got by faking his age, and hurried home while putting up with the cold. He doesn't work at the uh, the bakery no more. Aww. But then he stopped when he saw a familiar back below an uncomfortable street light. So, is that you? It was the youth he had seen at the beach. Dio felt like the night air could freeze him to the bone, but Suo was slightly dressed, so he came up to him out of concern. Didn't you hear me, Su- Uh oh, he's sleepwalking. The youth quickly turned around, and when Dio saw his face, his blood froze. <laughs> Instinctively, since in danger, he leapt back to make distance. Are you so? 
His eyes were clouded. His consciousness seemed absent. But this was no doubt the man Dio had seen at the sea recently. Upon close examination, he noticed that he wasn't wearing proper clothing or even shoes worthy of this weather. No way, right? Dio became worried that he had been involved in some incident and ran away from the scene. Don't worry. It's all right. Just tell me what happened, Suo. Uh, you're cold, right? You can have my coat, so... The moment he began to remove his coat... <laughs> oh my gosh. Excuse me, Su. The fist crashed into his face. It wasn't telegraph whatsoever. Dude, what the hell? No. No, what? This king didn't seem to like this too much. Well, whatever. I'll lead you back to your place. You remember where it is, right? Dio trapped pulling Su, but he wasn't moving at all. It was almost as if he had grown roots into the ground. Hey, get a grip. Yo. What? You're bleeding from your nose. Yeah, because you clocked me. The air was dry, so the punch must have split a vessel near the surface. Don't worry about it. Let's just get you back. Blood is flesh. I'm scared, so I'm scared. <laughs> Blood is flesh. <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> what are you doing, Suo? Oh my gosh. The next moment, Suo was right in front of him. The light behind him made it impossible to see his expression. A warm breath fell on the tip of his nose. Licking my nose, Dio thought. <laughs> he felt the wet flesh closing the hole. Oh my god! He felt the wet flesh closing the hole through which he breathed. Oh my god. <laughs> I imagine there were a variety of reactions to this scene. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dio, uh, not Dio, Suo's wet tongue wriggled around. His heated breath and the air surrounding them taking turns to touch Dio's nose. This is a lot. It felt as if breathing in at the wrong time would lead to him inhaling and choking on his saliva. <laughs> that was when he realized that Suo Keto was sucking his blood. With his mouth deep on Dio's nose, he was greedily slurping at up the blood. Hey, you! Cut it out! This is like the second time that we've been in a situation. Only was the opposite. Natsume, he wanted Natsume to, he offered himself up as a sacrifice of some sorts for Natsume to, um, to feast on as a vampire knight. Now this time, He's the one that's sucking blood. I don't know. Like, is this supposed to be a theme? Is this supposed to be some type of connection with this va with the vampirism? And I don't know. I don't know. I'm. So Does he have any? He's connected to Mamiya somehow. So I wonder if the vampirism is related to um, the cannibalism, the cannibalization of Mamiya, of quote unquote Mamiya, whoever that was, and whoever that was in the forest. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? Dio <laughs> wiped his nose and stopped Suo as he tried to walk away without a word. Come with me then. <gasps> hey! Suo grabbed Suo. Uh, Suo, gab, Suo grabbed Dio with his intense strength and pulled him away. Yeah, maybe he just likes vampires. <laughs> he could just like vampires. It felt as if the mechanisms keeping Suo's strength in check were gone. Dio had trouble keeping up with him without hurting himself. Dio 
Faust found himself at Atsuo's place, but Insula dragged him into his room upstairs. Oh, what the hell is this about? You're so cool. Huh? You're really cool. Uh, thanks. <laughs> he was about to submit to those unconditional words, but he was able to keep it together. Let go, let go of my arm. I need to go home and sleep. So, I know, so Daryl is taking this pretty well so far, to be honest. <laughs> He's taking this pretty well. I don't know. If I was in this situation, I might be a little more, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know how it would be actually, but I don't know. He's taking it pretty well. <laughs> What do you mean, no? It's not enough. I didn't have enough fun today. I don't want it to end. I want fun like I never had before. That's all the more reason to sleep. Nothing happens at night and I won't bleed anymore. How boring. Get used to it. That's how the world is. So it's gonna be even, so it's gonna be boring even as it ends, huh? What a shame. So, did you actually fall asleep? Seriously? <laughs> Let go of me. Hey, Suo. Oh my gosh. Did they actually sleep the whole night? <laughs> He actually stayed. Oh my goodness gracious. He never went home. So. Hey, wake up already. Huh? Ro? Why did you... Y your arm. I grabbed and bruised it. Was I holding it while sleeping? You don't remember? R remember what? I'm leaving. Please wait. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause trouble for you. It's better not to apologize at all than apologize for things you don't even remember doing. <sighs> Just go to a mental clinic. Bye. Oh my gosh. No, go back. The letter. I wrote a reply for you. I don't know what this is about, but I'm sorry, so. Oh. No, come back! So... Please don't leave me. It's so sad. Daybreak after dark. No, don't leave him. He needs your help. I promise he won't lock you in the basement this time. <laughs> Please help him. Upon coming back home and going to sleep, Daryl had a dream of an unfamiliar house. He was in a dark room with still air and only- Okay, hold on a second. This is the basement. I'm pretty sure of Suo's house. He has memories of the other timelines, or at least Suo, Suo's timeline. Right, because it happened in Suo's um, um, downfall. Um, timeline. He was in a dark room with still air and only a small light, small amount of light coming through the window. In there, he was trying his best to move his arms. As he wiped his sweat with his tiny hand, a bigger, unfamiliar hand touched his. The large hand wriggle wriggled as if crawling. Oh, how foolish. Unfamiliar particles flow from where he was touched. How foolish and pitiable. I mean, I'm, I'm just assuming it's Suo. I have no idea. Actually. I mean, I have an idea. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure if this is actually Suo. How foolish and pitiable you are, Ryo. Ryo began to tremble, but still couldn't resist. I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm just assuming that he has memories of that timeline. He might It might be a completely different um memory that he's that this dream is based off of. <sighs> he 
wipe his sweat and even out his breathing. He bit into his lip, which kept on quivering for a while. The classroom froze the moment he entered, but he was already used to that. Kikuchiro, you heard how the cops came to look for him at school the other day? Seriously? I guess it won't be long until he's in a reform school, huh? He was also used to overhearing conversations that his sensitive ears picked up as he passed by. He could turn around and talk back, but he knew by now that it would be, <coughs> that it would be pointless. And so, he continued to pretend, pretend not to hear any of it. It's not like I want to do this, he thought. Ah! Ah! Letting his intense emotions take control, he let the boiling sensations within flow free. Ah! That overflowing magma erupted, prompting him to take action. He couldn't stop his arms from punching people. The arm he threw crashed into a man's side. The man groaned before putting his own arm behind him. The next moment, the intense... That was random. I have no idea where that noise is coming from. Okay. The next moment, intense pain coursed through Joe's whole body. It turned out that the man had a stun gun behind him. Drain of all strength, Joe collapsed onto the ground. You're not as tough as I heard, Kikuchiro. The man's foot came down on him. He was crushing it with his leg as to put out a cigarette. Gah! It was on the verge of losing consciousness. But then, the large and fearsome hand floated back to his mind. Listen. Oh, this song. Hold on, I want to listen to this for a bit. What tomorrow brings But don't lose track of living in the present It's your mind It's your mind I'll just live all the time It's your mind It's your mind I'll try to force the Okay. You are. I don't know who this is supposed to be. Okay. You are weak and unfit for society. You will never be able to reach an understanding with others through words. The only type of communication you can manage is a simple one. It is a very primal method indeed. Dio pulled strength into his arms and doing a push-up, then raised his hand with the man's foot still on it. Huh? What? You still conscious? Watch. Does it? Does it? I'm excited then. Dio got up with force, throwing the man's leg into the air. Then grabbed and threw it before it landed. Duh! When the man was on his back, Joe stomped on his stomach, then straddled him. Oh my goodness gracious. Then pummeling his forehead. Gah! How intriguing. He pounded. Oh, you shouldn't look away. He punched. Look at this. Look and remember. Words are utterly powerless against violence. The next moment, Neil found himself standing. He was on a hill overlooking the area with dark clouds gathering above. Around him, there were countless unconscious men. I did 
did it again. He hesitantly looked at his fists, covered in the blood of multiple people, including his own. They had an unnatural color. They were trembling intensely. I don't know this, he thought. I don't know this, I don't know this, I don't know this. This is... As he stood in place, shot a man mourned. Help me. It was a faint call for help from the man who didn't know. Ah. Ah. The voice was so much like his own that Joe couldn't help but run off. Ah. 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 Why? Why? Makes me hate myself so much, he thought. This is so terrifying, and yet, why do I? Why does it make me feel so alive? He took off his shoes without so much as a hello. Welcome back! Oh, Midori. Hi. Her unfamiliar smile made him feel like as if his sin was being cleansed. Huh, that's odd. You're not watching the educational program you usually do. You're not watching the educational program you usually do. Yeah. It was a continuation of the documentary he seen before. It showed a young boy who was who messed up and was covered in mud, and his father who was hugging and reassuring him. Dio felt like he was grabbed by the heart. Unconsciously, he opened his eyes and tried to take in as much information as he could. You did fine. You did your best. The boy within the father's arms was crying, while his father's face was red, as he did his best to keep him from cry keep himself from crying as well. The father was embracing the boy with his strong arms, praising his efforts. It was a tearjerker of a documentary with plenty of touching moments. What is this? Dio thought. I don't understand. His brain was doing its best not to process and understand it. But then Midori pushed, Midori said something that pushed him over the edge. Must be nice. I want mommy to hug me too. <laughs> hey Midori, he thought. You have me, don't you? I'll be like a father to you. More reliable than mom could ever be. I'll protect and raise you. But what about me? Who will raise me? <gasps> ah! Sounds of destruction filled the small room. Joe threw the TV to the floor. Oh. Oh no. Barely hear anything. He couldn't control his body. He couldn't control his body well. There was a sound of someone opening the front door, but he was unable to react. Oh gosh, no! This is the last thing we needed. This is the last. This is already a tense moment between the two of them right now. Girl. <laughs> Why does she have to show up right now? What are you doing? Oh, For real. For real. <laughs> it's gonna get any worse, he thought. Ryo, what's going on? He had to clean up the room and keep this woman in a good mood. But all he could all that could move him now were the things related to a major question. Hey you. Huh? There was a feeling deep within his heart that he tried all these years to ignore. Why? Real, speak up. Something forbidden, sealed deep away and conveniently out of sight. A feeling that had now grown so big that it broke the container 
and overflowed. Where is my father? Stop talking. Where is my father? Shut that mouth and clean this up. Huh? Did you just punch me? You did, didn't you? Hey, stop! But why? The feeling, oh my God. The feelings, the questions, the sadness. It all became fizz. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is, uh, this is, this is, this is, this is, um, this is, this is, uh, this is starting off on a, on a rough note so far. Let me see. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, because he, he, I don't know if he's going to kill his mama right now, but having me Dodi witness him at least hurting his mama, you know, so brutally like this. This is this this is how his fall down route ended, and it ended tragically for him. I was like, Tojo, me Morichika, and they doomsday dreams with sides. They didn't. They didn't. I don't know. This is this is start off like a, this is this is a lot more intense, in my opinion. But like, I don't know how he can uh, come back from this in front of Emidori's eyes right now. Answer me. He didn't stop. He didn't get it. He didn't want to think about it. My father. I'm filth anyway, he thought. Words are utterly, utterly powerless against violence. Where's my father? A broken TV. Midori, so tired from shouting that she fainted. Repeating impact sounds. This is so... No! The tiny living room was messier than ever before and reeked of gloom. Damn you, Mamiya. You're the one who said you were his dad. Aren't you gonna protect him? Tell me, Mamiya. No. Aisungawa Osamu. I pulled strength into my fists. Why aren't you showing yourself to him? And not, an, and not as an illusion either. I can't save him, so... Okay. Um... I don't know. I'm guessing this is his mommy for right now. Stop. Oh no. It's someone physical. It wouldn't be Mamiya. Is it Arisugawa? No, it's a Samajima. I don't know. Okay, I'll just read. A third party suddenly grabbed Dio by the shoulder. The hope was so strong he couldn't shake it off. He turned around. Okay, it's Arisugawa. Okay. Curious that he just showed up all of a sudden randomly at this house. She's not worth killing. Trust me. Though, if you really want her dead, I can do the job for you. Why? Why now? Of all times? Arisengawa Osamu tightly embraced Kikichiryo's filth covered body. Bro, sorry I took so long. Those arms, larger than Dio's own, filled him with a sense of relief. The tears came just as his voice began to crack. You did fine. It was like that scene from the documentary. This is what I wanted, Dio thought. Uh, uh, Osamu! Scattered garbage everywhere. His younger sister convulsed from shock. Oh gosh, me daddy! Blood stains on the floor. His mother now silent. You did your best, Rio. I wanted this for so long. He thought again. Gosh, this is a lot. 
I was only hoping that something like that would only happen in his bad endings. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it happens in chapter one. No, chapter two. This is chapter two that just passed. Papa? Ute? What does that mean? It seems French. But I do not know French that well. So I have to translate it. Papa, ou te. Okay. So it means where are you? It can be Papa ou et tu as well. Okay, Papa, where are you? That's a fitting um, title for the name, for the chapter. You'll be treated like a special case. You should be glad. You're just abusing your authority, aren't you? After what happened, Dio did the smart thing and allowed Samaji Masataru to take him before the police got involved. Officially, Dio was now under Samajima's supervision and observed him he did. You know some difficult terms, I'm impressed. What is this place? It's one of the rooms I have. Feel free to use it as you see fit. Don't worry if you dirty the walls. I'll call a cleaner. Why would you lock me up here personally? What are you after? I won't tell you until you remember it by yourself. You said something similar last time. Have we met in the past? Who knows? Maybe you realized something while living here. Wait, where's me Dory? What happened to her? Don't worry, she's currently being kept in a special facility. Your mother is nowhere near her. You think I'm just gonna believe that? Let me see her right now. Oh, you do realize that the least trustworthy person here is you, right? Whether or not you committed, you committed domestic violence. <sighs> this is why I hate this so much. Uh, I don't want them to be separated. Midori was quite terrified. Merely seeing your face might bring up bad memories. How dare you? Anyway, I'll come again tomorrow. <laughs> Let me see, Midori. No. No. I hate this. Uh, okay. 199. 200. The way Kikuchirio was focusing on none but exercise made him like an actual prisoner. Made him look like an actual prisoner. He walked over to the refrigerator and grabbed some min mineral water. Phew. Now for push ups. He, he sure doesn't look like he has much to do. 199. 200. It hurts just to look at him. It hurts just to read about it. Oh, yeah. Oh? Kikuchi reached into his bag and took out a letter. It was the one he received from Suo. I ended up not giving him a, re giving him a reply. I didn't, have, I didn't even have the time to tell him about this. I wonder if he's still waiting for me. Eh, forget it. It's not like he meet with someone like me again. <laughs> no! Open that letter back up and read it. He went and crushed the nice looking letter in his hand. And even if we did meet, I'd probably be unable to look him in the eye. Don't imagine those pure eyes filling with, with rejection and dread and shook his head. He lost his trust and kindness. All he got in exchange was a mystery man who had given him warmth in the past and went on to vanish. <laughs> what a bother. He covered his face with his bony hands as the evening sun shone through the window and onto his back. <sighs> no changes today either, huh? The day passed and Kikuchirio continued exercising like it had become routine. He showed no intention of looking for a way to escape. Almost as if he knew 
how meaningless it was. But as he did his thing, he couldn't help but think about the crumpled up letter from Sewell, yeah? Okay. Shit. <clears throat> I should just tear it up, man. Tear up this pretty little envelope he must have gotten from a specialty shop. Leo thought. Would he feel better if he tore it up? He shut his eyes tight. But instead of splitting the paper, he opened it. Ryo, thank you for the letter. You say you're jealous of me when in truth, I know it looks up to you. <sighs> Feeling a piercing pain in his chest, Ryo continued reading. You woke me up and helped me at the sea a, a whole two times now. You're an amazing person. <clears throat> I'm sure you're far greater than you believe yourself to be. But I know you don't realize you're f yourself. I mean, just look where I ended up. I want you to remember this much, though. No matter what you say, I will always believe in your noble kindness. He's forceful even in text, huh? P.S. I still can't forget the taste of the donut you share with me. Let's go to the sea and eat more donuts there sometime. I want to know what the whole what a whole one is like. <laughs> he sure is cheeky. He put more strength into his hands holding the letter. I love some donuts too. Feeling like he had seen a smile. Mm. Excuse me. Feeling like I had seen a smile for the first time in a while. I couldn't help but break into a smile myself. I'm glad those two are doing their letter exchange. What are you writing? Samajima quite Samajima Satoru quite enjoyed coming to his apartment and being hit with a glare that could kill. Kikuchi Ryo's gaze was abnormally sharp. It carried a heat that brought excitement back into him every day he returned from work. Of course he would like it. <laughs> this day, however, that glare never came, which he found lacking. He took a look at and saw Kikuchi Ryo's face in the desk. Not telling. As it was expecting Samajima's question, the boy made distance between them. I see. Won't you confiscate it? Do you want me to proofread it or something? Sadly, I have no interest in correcting your ideals. <laughs> Despite saying that, Samajima continued staring at Kikuchi Ryo. After a while, Ryo stopped writing. I'm s okay. I didn't think I would just came all of a sudden at the house and then he gets taken to the police station with Samajima. You know, like. And it seemed like some, it's, no, it seemed like it said that Kikuchi Ryo was the one who turned himself into, so, turned himself in to Samajima Satoru before the rest of the police could get a hold of him. So like, oh, what is I just I would do right now? I, maybe he's looking after me, Mi, Midori. His side profile was the unique expression of a person pondering how best to express himself. Samajima found it familiar. You're quite like him. Like the children's writer I came to know in the pink house, he thought. Kikuchi opened to the knot to hear it. When will, we, when will we get to meet again? Oh, is that what you want? Of course. She's my precious sister. Oh, so that's who you had in mind. Kikuchiro quickly gave up on getting an answer and returned his gaze to the letter. Samajima wanted to wanted to see his name written in this edge of in this edge of writing. Should I pass it on? Huh? The letter to Suokato, I mean. But why would you? I've been acquainted with him for quite a while. He's my boss's son. 
And you expect me to believe that? You're free to believe what you want, but I may even bring you his responses. Well, this doesn't, be this doesn't mean I believe you, but thank you. The smile grown on Samajima's face contained trust like Kikuchiryo had never seen. Hello. Starting today, your house arrest is officially over. Huh? The first thing Samajima told him that day left Ryo speechless. Yeah. Let's celebrate your release with a visit to the amusement park. What about the letter? Well, not like I expected much from you, but... Start by taking me to Midori. Kikuchi Midori is there as well. The celebration must be fun after all. I'm, I don't know. I'm so, I'm so nervous to see the two of them link back up. I hope Midori's not forever um, traumatized by him. I hope they can reconnect on good terms. I'm so nervous. I don't want to see them. Um, distant. What's the catch? Keito and Osamu are there as well. But why? Samajima's smile grew wider. You wish to see them, no? I get Osamu, but Sua has nothing to do with this. He most certainly does. What do you mean? You'll find out when you go there tomorrow. And do try to enjoy yourself. I'll be watching. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm so glad. Ah! Do! Midori! Were you eating well? You weren't scared, were you? I was just fine. What about you? Yeah, I'm fine too. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. His days were full of stress, and he could barely bring himself to eat. However, Midori's warmth completely dispersed his pent-up irritation. Midori, now in his arms, was in a far better state than he had expected. Osamu, over here! Again, it's Uncle Osamu. Oh. Osamu. Well, uh, I'm glad you look fine. Enjoy your day, will ya? Are you the one who looked after her? I visit a facility once or twice. Anyway, you hungry? I'll buy you something. I want ice cream. What, in this cold? Well, don't blame me if it makes your tummy hurt. Chad and the two walked off towards a stand. The fact that Midori was so close to him made Joe feel somewhat excluded. 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 Mm. She's just fine without me, huh? Don't say that, please. He made a dejected sigh. As he made a dejected sigh, he heard some energetic footsteps coming up from behind him. Ro! So, whoa. I was worried sick. I'm so glad you're okay. I really am. You're exaggerating. You're exaggerating. <laughs> you are quite well suited for amusement parks, Kato. Mr. Samajima, thank you for inviting me. That goes for you too, Ryo. Yay, Kato's here. Want to have some ice cream? That does look so good. Maybe I'll have some. I did say you wouldn't be able to eat it all. Oh. Well, at least you have someone who doesn't mind eating ex excess. Hello. The five people gathered in this cloud of the music park were a strange group. Let's have some fun, Suo. We're all here to cheer you up. Cheer you up. All right. The cheering music all around created a light dissonance. Let's go, Kato. Time tends to fly when you're having fun. You're right. Colorful light decorations illuminated their backs, further emphasizing the strange atmosphere. However, they were still able to enjoy their time. Osamu, again! Let's go again! Hell yeah! That wasn't nearly enough time. 
now or nearly enough. Let's take let's take the front this time. Me Dorothy Nightingale nice went to the roller coaster multiple times. I love high places. Tommy Jim went on the high bike ride by himself. Such carefree people. I feel embarrassed for expecting something. I breathe heavily. And I shifted my gaze to my friends who were finally met again. I brought some warm tea. Have some. Thanks. You can't prepare it, huh? Kikuchirio and Suokeito were having a break on a bench. I was looking forward to this, so yeah. I even have some hand warmers. They should be a bit deeper in. Oh, ah! A bundle of papers fell out of the bag. I'll get them. Are these all letters? Gikuchirio widened his eyes when he saw Keito's large body as he hid his face in embarrassment. I got the reply from Mr. Samijima, so he actually gave it to you. But I wasn't sure how to respond, so I figured I'd write multiple replies and pick the best one. Oh. I also wrote a letter for you, even though I never got your response. Really? Just one, though. Keito wagged its invisible tail, <laughs> as if it was all he had been waiting for. Wow! Thanks so much! Have you been getting enough sleep? Mm, not recently. Promise me you will from now on, okay? Sh sure. I'll get some takoyaki. Keito's smile ran off. Left by himself, Kikuchi waited for Keito to disappear from sight. He took out the letter he just got. Sorry, Suo. Unlike you, I'm not the type who can wait. For real. His handwriting sure is pretty. Like something straight out of a textbook. Was he working on his penmanship? Ryo wondered. I remember the morning I found you next to me. I'm really sorry for what I said back then. Do I seem like a rude young boy to you? That is painfully awkward. That's painfully similar to how I feel. Do you thought? I'm still very glad that someone that you wait. I'm still very glad that you met me with a smile back then. Bro, the apple pie looked really good, so I got it too. And w w wait, why are you reading the letter? Hey, Suo. Y yes Will you continue writing letters to me, no matter what kind of person I am? That's such a, <laughs> yeah, that's such a loaded question. Uh, Ryo knew how unfair that question was. Of course! It wasn't exactly nice to make him promise someone without knowing all the details. It wouldn't like him to put up an insurance um, in case Suo began rejecting him. I see. Even so, though it may have been brief, Suo's words gave Kikuchirio some peace of mind. Mm. 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 Dori, are you sleeping? All that play must have been tiring. All right, I'll carry you around. Don't worry, I'll do it. Aren't you just as tired? But, what, you want me to carry you as well? N no, forget it. Just tell me when you get sleepy. Okay. What's wrong? Are you tired too, Kato? N oh, no, I'm not. I wonder if my frail arms can carry you. I'm not tired, okay? This was a mirror house. But Sua was walking around like look this was a mirror house, but Sua was walking around while looking at his feet. He wanted to overwrite his current emotional state with some fun memories. Right! I wanna go on the Ferris wheel. The view should be exceptional in the evening. Huh? Ro? Samajima? He looked around, but couldn't see anything besides his own reflection. 
Ferris wheels are way too slow. It's going to merry go round instead. Come on, Zulkato, don't be a stranger. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that they know each other. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know if they know each other. But Zulkato seems to be wary of Arisugawa Osamu for some reason. Still carrying the now asleep Midori, Arisugawa widened a smile behind his glasses. His face, as he did that, was reflected by countless mirrors. <laughs> Quiet. In a corner behind a wall of mirrors, Kikuchiryo had his mouth shut by Samajima Satoru's large hand. Don't make too much noise. Remember who's with Kikuchi Midori right now. Are we clear? I'll talk. I'll let you talk now. Oh my gosh. You planned this? You're with Osamu? That is also true. <laughs> Arisengawa is uh, just generally a suspect character. <laughs> Absolutely not. I would appreciate not being grouped in together with him. Suddenly, Satoru pouted like a child, then cleared his throat to switch back to his usual self. <clears throat> I don't intend to hurt you. I only wish to talk. He grabbed Kikuchiryo's arm so gently that it was almost uncomfortable. I like Ferris wheels. Would you ride one with me? He then pulled Ryo by the wrist, taking him to the entrance. Let's go, Ryo. Uh-uh, don't go with him. He gonna murder you. He gonna murder you. Gigutino had no choice but to go along with him. No, he gonna kill you in that Ferris wheel. <laughs> Ferris wheels are really nice. So cozy and lovely. Make some space. Our knees are gonna touch. I'm sorry. My legs are quite long. Samajima crossed his legs, closing the distance between their knees even further. With a metallic sound, the cabin, be make, the cabin began making a circle. They soon left the ground and reached a height that would, <laughs> that would kill a person instantly, should they fall out. Okay, <laughs> that's an interesting um, 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 interesting comparison. There was nowhere to run. Look around. The city is so distant. Looking down at it makes it seem almost artificial. Kikuchiryo was in no state to enjoy the view. This is so nostalgic. Have you finally remembered? There was a time limit to this torturous experience, as the Ferris wheel would make a turn in ten odd minutes. All Dio had to do was keep quiet and put up with it. <clears throat> the cabin shook violently, and the Ferris wheel came to a halt. Oh gosh. Dio's heartbeat accelerated and announced to let them know that there was some sort of trouble, of course. Oh dear. Ah. 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 The oxygen in the air immediately became heavy, immediately felt heavy and difficult to breathe. He inhaled as hard as he could, but it didn't make breathing any easier. He couldn't open the window either. All he had to do was enjoy the shaking while gulping down the saliva. Also, hello, Flay. Welcome. I'm glad to see you here today. I hope you're having a, a wonderful day today. Are you okay? Stop making it sound like this isn't your fault. My, how scary. This happened at the perfect time. Now I can finally talk to you like myself. Huh? <laughs> Within the unstable cabin, Samajima Satoru slowly stood up. Okay, and... I'm scared. Why are you so close to him? Get away from him. He's so creepy. <laughs> that face, that smile. It's the, it's the combination of this long, toothless smile and this very long nose. 
You know, that's giving me this expression. This, he looks like um. Oh, you know what he looks like? He looks like one of those clowns. Those clown, like, have you seen those abstracted clown symbols? They usually have like closed eyes, and they have like a old long, a big smile, and they have like a diamond face paint and like rosy cheeks, stuff like that. He kind of looks like that a little bit, like an abstract, an abstracted clown illustration. That's what it looks like. A metallic s ceiling made a disquieting sound. Hey, what the hell are you? I'm sorry. I just wanted to see you from up close. Dio felt barely alive, as if the ground itself had been pulled up from under him. <sighs> His large bent body and long arms placed him in a two-fold trap. You cannot escape now. Dio wanted to shout that he knew all that all too well. I won't have you remember what happened in 2003. He wanted to run. I'll tell you about the Mamiya within you. But he wasn't allowed to run. Okay. <sighs> the Mamiya within him. Is he insinuating the fact that his Mamiya... Because his Mamiya has encouraged him to just let him... Just let go. Stop trying to constrain his violent tendencies. And just embrace his full self, quote unquote. You know, by being violent. So, is he trying to insinuate that in 2003, his mamiya, he and his mamiya were responsible for a death? Or some something happened in 2000. Yeah, a death. Yeah, a death in 2003. I don't know. Is that Suo they're talking about? Or are they talking about someone else? Papa Ute Year of his death 2003 The nail that sticks out gets hammered in But stick out enough and it becomes standard I've heard the this part before I have never um, heard this 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 extension of the quote. That was what I finally realized. Odd as it was, after eating Mamiya's flesh that day, I acquired a leading position in my department. Everyone said that they wanted to become like a superintendent, superintendent Samajima, that he had charisma. Charisma was, at its core, a charm that common people lack. We are creatures biologically attracted to things we do not have. Oh. This is the actual current day Samajima. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm confused. So, how does that Samajima know? Samajima that, that's interrogate, that's with Kikuchiryo right now. How does he know anything that happened in 2003, right? He should not be, he should be from 1999, right? So that means he shouldn't know anything about anything that happened after that point. That is what I gained from that day's madness. And that was it. I decided to curse society, but thanks to Mamiya, I was able to adjust it, adjust to it, and keep it in the palm of my hand. Such irony. Looking back, there was plenty of that ever since I met Mamiya. Was everything that happened caused by the tr karma surrounding Mamiya? Perhaps, and this particular memory was no different. A body had been found at a construction site. It belonged to Mas Masaki. Masaki Hashida, a 64-year-old factory worker. I see. And the first witness is... It's... A child. Oh, look at him! Oh my gosh! Look at him! He's so cute! 
and he even has um the uh dog tags that Arisengawa Osamu gave him. I remember them, right? Isn't this his, isn't the isn't that a present from um Osamu? He's so cute. I love him so much. Oh, okay. He's so small, right? His eyes are so big. <laughs> The moment Satoru saw the child, Kikuchiryo, his muscles tense up. As he observed and their eyes met, Satoru was assailed by an intense feeling of deja vu for the second time. Twice now have different sensations touched him simultaneously. He used his senses for anything off to solve his cases. Wait, he used his senses for anything off to solve his case as many times now. However, this was the first time that he felt two off things with different causes from the same person. It was just a boy. Satoru realized that he was feeling something personal, some unrelated to the case about this child. He felt like he had to realize what it was. Otherwise, he would regret it for the rest of his life. The rest of his life. The rest of this life. He didn't know what he was saying. After all, Mami had returned to try killing parts on <coughs> You know, Mami. The question made his heart freeze over. I do, yes. What is your relationship with Mami? Satoru kept himself in control. That could have easily been the name of a friend at school. Mami is somewhat important to me. A sweet metallic sound could be heard underneath the collar of the boy's somewhat oversized clothes. Mamiya, help me. This nostalgic atmosphere was familiar to Satoru. He could almost feel, he could almost smell the air of the house where they shared their memories of Mamiya in 1999. <laughs> yes, I know Mamiya too. No good. Satoru recognized that this feeling was no good. Satoru. There was no way he could see Mamiya in this child. Okay, so here again is the idea that once they see the Mamiyas that the others instilled in these people, they start to feel uncomfortable. Okay, so this is his reaction to Arisengawa's Mamiya and he doesn't like it. Thank you for cooperation, Kikuchiryo. Are you tired? I'm okay. After questioning the boy and taking his fingerprints, just in case, Samajima gave him some apple juice. The boy was an odd one. Despite finding the corpse, he remained calm as he reported it. It seemed unaffected even now. Okay, so... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking now. So, Masasaki... Masaki... Was it Masaki Hashida? That death is the one from 2003. That one did not happen 2012. Okay. So this is what actually happened with that factory worker in 2003. There were no... There were no signs that he cried or no... Wait, there were no signs that he cried, nor any tales of acute stress disorder. Then again, perhaps he wasn't showing any symptoms uh, due to being in a state of shock. Satoru felt that he had to see how he would progress and treat him accordingly. I've contacted your address several times now, but no one appears to be home just yet. That's fine. It was likely that this child would be subjected to something close to domestic violence. You don't have to tell her about this. If you interrupt her at her job, it's just going to cause rumors. Now I get yelled at. Despite being so young, he seemed to understand that if someone was questioned by the police, it could lead to people gossiping about it. The proof was in the fact that he was talking quietly and hiding his wounds. I see. Anyway, here's your reward as the first witness. Normally, I would give this to your guardian, but it is not here. It has to go to you. It was just a few thousand yen, but that was a lot to a child at his age. As a rule, first witnesses had to be visited several times following their initial report. 
Would you mind meeting me again? As long as you don't come to my house. Are you familiar with the shrine? Are you familiar with the shrine grounds? I suppose we'll meet there next weekend. Kajiro nodded. And we shall continue our talk about Mamiya as well. <laughs> the shine in his large eyes gives out to the first heartache in a while. Oh, yes. The moment he came back home, Satoru collapsed on the sofa and took a deep breath. Mamiya is back. Many days had passed since they ate the flesh and sort of raised a new Mamiya. He was the only one in, he was the only one unable to find a child who could turn into Mamiya. Oh. Okay. So he never did. He never did um um implant a Mamiya into a child. I'm s I'm so curious about how Suoketo came into contact with Mamiya if it wasn't through Samajima. No doubt because unlike theirs, my Mamiya, my Mamiya had the appearance of a child. It wasn't that he didn't have any motivation or investment. He simply couldn't find a child worthy of being his Mamiya. But that one, Kikuchiryo, he's my mam he's Mamiya. Without me having to instill Mamiya in him. Samijima's urge to kill has subsided after he consumed Mamiya's flesh. Oh, okay, he's not like that no more. He was satisfied with just having his dear mommy inside him. Okay, well, I mean, if that's one good thing to come up out of that, then I'm happy for him. Rabbits. Three of them. Perhaps they are kept on these grounds. Do you know that rabbits are counted as birds sometimes? Birds? Yes, indeed. I did know that in Japanese. Why? They don't have any feathers or, any, or anything. Indeed, they don't. Apparently, in the past, the monks in the temple couldn't eat beast meat. That's why they decided that rabbits are birds and ate them. Or so the theory goes, anyway. Th they ate rabbits? How sad. You eat cows and pigs yourself, don't you? Why do you feel that way about rabbits? You're right. I wonder why. Because they're cute? How strange. For all you know, rabbits may want you to eat them. Why would they want that? <laughs> huh? There's a story that goes like this. A long, long time ago, there was a rabbit, a fox, and a monkey. One day, the three were gathering fruit from a tired elder. The monkey brought a fruit, the fox caught a fish, but the rabbit didn't bring anything. That was when the rabbit said, eat me and jumped into the fire, giving itself to the elder. A white rabbit went pa a white rabbit went past Amajima right as he finished the story. It's a moving tale. A creature burned itself for the sake of letting the elder live. I would it wouldn't have died if it didn't feel like saving the elder. No. That rabbit had no other choice. If it didn't help the elder, it would have regretted it for the rest of its life. Is that worse than, de worse than death? Most likely. Kikuchiryo balled his small hands into fists and stopped walking. Satoru felt that he might have scared him a little and tried to make it better. There's a continuation of the story that says the elder was actually a god. The god took pity on the rabbit and put his image on the moon as an example for everyone to see. That's why there's a rabbit living on the moon. So the rabbit was happy because it regretted nothing and could be an example to others? I think so, yes. I believe this rabbit is, like, is a lot like Mamiya. He also compared himself to the moon quite often. He looked up at the moon in the pale sky. The lunar seas were said to be like a rabbit had melted onto the blue atmosphere and the outline was, ve was vague. I've never paid attention to the moon before. I've heard about that there's lunar seas. I've never seen that in real life. I have to go and look next time I see the moon outside and see if I can see it. Mamiya is like the monkey that gave the fruit. 
He's alive and always there. The boy put his head on his chest, claws in the chain peeking through his clothes to gleam and shine. That's a nice accessory you have there. I got it from Amina. Can I take a look at it? It must have made him happy to, show, to be able to show it off. Dylan would remove his necklace with a smile on his face. It's a dog tag. It was a simple one. The only text carved on it was a deal. So I thought he felt like he had seen something like this before. Mamiya had, had one. And when I said I liked it, he made one for me too. A strange premonition hit Satoru like a bolt of lightning. Ah. Ah. He suddenly had trouble breathing. Satoru? Was this child actually Mamiya because someone had already turned him into Mamiya? Could you let me meet your Mamiya? Mamiya! Oh my! <laughs> Arisagawa! Okay! The orange is a nice uh, touch. It's a nice touch. Nice touch. The orange earrings and the, the line inside the coat. Nice! Oh, wait, does he have... I can't really see. He's kind of covering it. But he has some type of pattern blue pants. Interesting. That's a nice outfit. <laughs> oh, Ro. You said you wanted me to meet someone. Oh, yes. I indeed know you're my Mia, Ro. The three headed to a nearby park in complete silence. Two adult men and a child. Who would onlookers think if they saw them? That. Well. This was Satoru's first time meeting Arisagawa since that day. The swamp like taste of the years 1999 and 2000 spread across his mouth. Mamiya! Try not to trip! He had aged since their last encounter. No. I think I will have become an adult. You can rely on him. Like a father. I didn't expect to meet you through Ryo. <laughs> it's like that time Mamiya put us under Tokyo Tower. Mamiya. So you really are the one who sent Mamiya into Ryo. Kuchiryo was playing in the sand in an abandoned piece of playground equipment. I was quite surprised. You see, when I look at Kukuchiryo, I felt like I, see, I saw Mamiya himself. If you are the one responsible, it will explain everything. So, you also saw Ryo as Mamiya? Yes, unmistakably. <laughs> Thanks. You sound happy. Because I am. My work was conveyed as, an in, as intended. Satoru had always hated the mocking smile this man would often make. I created that Mami after lots and lots of polishing. Weren't you unable to write stories? Oh, he stopped writing? No. After putting down the pen in 2000, I considered what it was that I consider what it was that Mamiya needed. But I'm glad I got you to confirm it. If you think that's Mamiya, then the Ingaki and Bach would likely feel the same way. I finally made it this far. He looked up the window sky. So they found the expression scary. And how far are you planning to go? Tell me you turn around. Mamiya, no, the man turned around and smiled a dirty grin. Who knows? Maybe I should use Ryo as my idol in my new religion. Okay. I understand now that the child is the Mamiya you created. However, back when I looked at him, 
I felt that there was another thing off about him. It was a common type of deja vu or unrelated to any yearning. It was about the dog tag Kikuchiryo showed off. The you. <gasps> oh, he remembers that. He remembers that. Oh my gosh. The people in this timeline remember the um, other timelines. He's quite, he is similar. <clears throat> oh wait, no. Is it just this one though? I feel like my Yuri remember Tojo, though. I feel like my me, my Yuri remember Tojo. As um, like when Tojo helped my Yuri from that one situation, they spent that night at the hotel, and you know just hung out. I feel like my Yuri remembered him. Um. As an as as her adult form, she remembered an the current present day um tojo from her memories as a child so i guess it's not just these people but it seems like these people are remembering these alternate timelines he's similar to the youth that i met at kato's house in 1999. in december of 1999 he was left to take care of his boss's son mommy um, had vanished shortly after that so sotoru's memories of him weren't particularly vivid yet please help Suo Suo Kato was a sleepwalker I can't protect him that man shaking desperately as he pled wasn't that Kikuchiryo himself due to his particular line of work Sotoru one was not the one to mistake people for others normally one would assume they were siblings or parent and child and he couldn't bring himself to dismiss the possibility that they were the same person. And how would that happen? Well, I'm guessing that he wouldn't put past any supernatural explanation given Mamiya's existence. <laughs> but then, who was that child? The Count of St. Germain who appeared in various times? <laughs> that just seems to make him more like Mamiya. As he reclined on the sofa, he was overtaken by a mix of wonder and curiosity. How would Kato react if he saw him? I haven't talked to him since he bought me a new... Wait. I haven't talked to him since he told me he bought a new phone. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> It's an adult Suokato. Oh my gosh. Look at him. He's so handsome. Oops, I skipped by accident. <laughs> he grew up so well. Oh my gosh. Okay. Look, Mr. Samajima. I finally got a new phone. Let's exchange numbers then. I can even send you mail. Would it interest you if I told you about this? No, that's no good. Showing that child to him can make his sleepwalking flare up again. Or maybe I'm worrying too much. A lot of things happened today. I should go to sleep. Sazuru so hope he could meet Mommy again in his dreams. I don't need dreams. I can already meet him anytime I want. Mommy exists in this world as Kikuchiryo. Knowing that Kikuchiryo was a Mamiya created by Arisingawa Osamu, Satoru kept, couldn't keep himself from wanting to meet him. Thus he, insist, thus, he insisted that they continued meeting at the Shrine Grounds on his days off. Talking to him made Satoru miss the honeymoon period from the end of the century. It also made him wish that this boy, too, was a model. One rabbit. He could pierce his heart with his blade, tear his limbs off. Two rabbits. He could close his screaming mouth as he drowned him in the bath. Okay, I'm trying to think. 
Um, no, that's a different thing. Never mind. Okay, no, 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 never mind. Okay, so what I'm thinking, what I was just thinking is that, huh? Um, could it be that the memories that were popping up um, in, in Dio's dreams about being locked in a basement somewhere and this one guy's, I don't know, there's some guy talking to him. Is that Sawajima? Did he end up actually fulfilling some sadistic fantasies on Hikuchiryo, unfortunately, as a child? Under the because he thought he was Mamiya. And I was also thinking that, didn't we see something similar to this? Um, in Suo Keito's, was it the downfall route? He was trans transported into this alternate dimension where he was trapped in the basement. And this one guy was saying, was talking about Mamiya for some reason. Like, you stole Mamiya away from me. And I'm like, hmm, but wait, that's that's not that's not Kikuchi. So that's not about this that's not the same event. But I feel like that those are connected to each other. I feel like that the dream that Kikuchi had in this side and Doomsday Dreams, I think that could be about Samajima. And Kikuchi not Kikuchi. So I don't know. I kind of had a thought. I don't know if I said this back then, but I kind of thought that that was probably someone like Arisungawa at the time, like that mysterious man that said you stole Mami away from me. Maybe Suo Keito, maybe that is Arisungawa. And Suo Keito had a flashback and maybe the context of that is he took Kikuchi Dio away from Arisungawa's um what's the word for it? Arisungawa's yeah, I don't know, just stole his like stole him, I guess. I don't know. Took him away from him. I guess he he became close with Suo Keito instead of Arisungawa Osami. I don't know. Maybe that maybe maybe those two two flashbacks slash dreams slash visions slash hallucinations. I don't know. Maybe those are connected to each other. Okay. Three rabbits. Satoru? Yes? You were spacing out. Oh, I was just looking at the dried leaves. What am I thinking? Satoru thought. Remember your pride as someone who plays by the rules. Still, as if all his wishes could come true. No. I will surely go back to normal once I meet Kato. He took out his phone he kept for private calls and clicked on his name in the contact list. Perhaps he had a lecture and couldn't answer. Just as I thought that he was thinking of leaving a message. Is this Suo? Hello? Well, I guess not if it's not what he was expecting. Who is that? Is it Aisagawa? I don't know. A pit opened in the stomach. Huh. I don't know. Who is this? You're not Kato, are you? Did he have the wrong number? Or did it belong to someone else now? Satoru Hope begged that that was the case, but... E.D. Oh, it is Arisengawa. I was like, E.D.? What does that stand for? I was just about to look it up. <laughs> I was just about to look it up. I was like, wait, this is deja vu. I remember looking this up. Let me think about it. And I remember what it stood for. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That was uh, Arisengawa's nickname for, um, for Satoru. E.D. <laughs> there was only one person in the world who call him by that crude name. <laughs> Only one. Arisungawa? He remained calm, putting on a business-like demeanor. What happened to Kato? He and he hoped that this was unrelated. Hey, E.D. Tell me. 
He tried his he tried to keep cool with Strainer's emotions. Is real a proper Mamiya? Why would he ask that now of all times? Is it pleasant to be with him? He felt as though he could read his mind, but how? Just put Kato on the phone and tell me if he's all right. Good to know. Good to know what? Tatsuru had no idea what was happening now. Sales with me. His life is in my hands. He's my hostage, basically. Get it? I failed. He's far more composed than I am. Tatsuru thought. What do you want? First, there's something I gotta confirm. Who's more important to you? Suo or Mamiya? Why would he ask that? He thought of the young man with a bright smile and that dancing sky blue hair. He was like a mythical creature to could trust with your last ray of hope. So they place on one side of the scale and a grand moon on the other. Mamiya, shouldn't that be obvious? Yeah, I suppose it is. So it wasn't enough to outweigh it. Oh, it's so terrible. I'll give you a location. I want you to come here immediately. And don't tell anyone about anyone else about this. Very well. Pure madness, along with a shadow he has sworn he would never fall. Wait, along with a shadow he saw would never fall on him again, began to overtake him. Kato, you were. Oh my gosh, Arisugawa, what was the what was the purpose behind this? Upon seeing the youth all covered in bruises and unconscious, the usual poker faced man panic. What do you have against him? Against him? The sheer gall to even ask that. Aren't you the one who secretly told him about Mamiya? Mamiya? You know the relationship between him and Kikuchiryo? Huh? No, Ryo's got nothing to do with. What are you talking about? I feel like we never had a. I feel like we've never really had a proper conversation in, in 1999. Oops. Looks like in 2003, we'll have to face each other and talk. The two briefly shared their thoughts. This is such bullshit. Is this layered structure supposed to be our sin and punishment? Okay, so I'm guess. Well, no. I'm guessing that. Satoru Samajima. Oops. Okay, I didn't press anything. Okay. I guess Samajima Satoru is thinking that Kikuchi Ryo, as an adult, was the boy that he saw in 1999 when Suo Keita was still in middle school, right? And I'm guessing he's trying to, I guess he's bringing that up to explain why Suo Keito would know about Mamiya. Like, you know the relationship between Suo Keito and, uh, and, um, and, uh, Suo Keito and Kikuchi Ryo. But Suo Keito already had a Mamiya before he even met Kikuchi Ryo. So he couldn't have learned of Mamiya from him. And Samajima said that he ain't put Mamiya into him, and anyone actually, he haven't put him into, put Mamiya into any vessel. So I'm wondering, who did he learn Mamiya from? Like, what is Arisengawa? Arisengawa found out about this just now. Samajima didn't do it. I don't know. Yeah, song time. <laughs> I guess it's the perfect time to just take a break and just uh, theorize. Let me turn the music up just for a little bit. Okay. 
Hmm. He had no choice but to remain silent and watch things unfold. I had no choice but to remain silent, intervene as a spectator. The karma surrounding him is far too complex. Right? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's basically saying the um the titles of, of the different like um, sections of this game. Call me Mamiya. I think I will also have Musil as Mamiya to keep it to I see hope in you. Samajima Satoru found selfish peace in Suo Keto's existence. Oh, I was right. I was right. I was right. Suo Keito did have a memory or like a vision of being abducted by Aisengawa Osamu and tortured. He did have that vision in his fall down route when he went on his little escapade to help Kikuchirio uh, find his memories. I was right. Aisengawa Osama was unable to tolerate Suo Keito, who knew Amiya other than the ones he created. Yay! <laughs> I was right. I don't know how many of these theories I've been right on so far. But I feel happy. I feel accomplished <laughs> when I'm able to figure out things before the game tells me. But then, who is that child? Samaji Masatoru, who believed that the youth who appeared next to Suo Keito in 1999 was Kikuchiryo. The warped gears of fate slotted into place and began making a satisfying sound as they moved. This is a nice CG. What do you intend to do? Samajima looked at the blue, sky blue hair of the blooded, unconscious youth. He didn't show it, but he was doing his best to keep himself from crying. Oh, Samajima. Even this was all predestined. The flesh beyond the flowing blood invited the inhabitants of the pink house. Do we still have the house you can see Tokyo Tower from? No, I already sold it. But I bought a villa to, but I brought, wait, but I bought a villa in the mountains. It's quiet and has soundproofing. Why are you asking that? There's no, <laughs> why do you need to explain that though? Wait, but I bought a villa, villa in the mountains. It's quiet and has soundproofing. Why do you need it? <laughs> quiet and soundproofing? It seems like you tried to advertise to Adisugawa that this is a perfect place to conduct any of your crimes. You, well, well, without having anyone interfere or know what's going on. <laughs> like, you don't have to say all that. Why are you asking that? There's nothing to gain from harming him anymore. There was no stopping them. What do you mean? This ain't nearly enough. He, did, he still didn't say anything I wanted to hear. I won't let him get away. And you will use my house for it? You like sharing your places, don't you? Especially if it's four of us. Huh? The cells. Stop the cells, please. Stop the cells. The cells were yearning. You should live there. <clears throat> you should live there, too. It's Kikuchiro, I mean. You want a life like before, and you want it bad, don't you? You saw right through him. He was seen right through. No one could escape the truth. It all converged upon his con it all converged upon his conclusion. Uh, I hate you so much. What a coincidence. Me too. Not him actually agreeing to this. Oh my gosh. <coughs> <coughs> The first thing Suo Keito saw upon waking up was a dust of flow. When he took a deep breath, the sand of air made him scowl. 
No, so no. Where is this? When he tried to move, he realized his arms and legs were bound. Before he could fully understand the situation, he saw the shoes belonging to the author he so respected. Icing out. Oh, uh, it's terrible. He was even one of his readers. Didn't he say he's kind to his readers? He said that to Kikuchiro. He's your reader, Arisengawa. You can't hurt him. And also now I understand why uh, Suo Keito feels some sort of unease around Arisengawa when they go to the amusement park. Even though it shouldn't have happened yet since he's still in middle school at that time. Hey there. I see you're awake. Mr. Arisungawa, why are you doing this? Don't worry, I'll let you go right away. All you gotta do is say one thing. Pretty simple, huh? Just say you have nothing to do with Mamiya. Huh? Wait, but Mamiya the close friend I've known for a long time. He's very important to- Before he could finish, the sole of a shoe was on his head. I mean, all you gotta- I would just say though, <laughs> like, it's really not that important to me if he knows my relationship with me or not. I would just lie so I could leave. <laughs> Before he could finish, the sole of the shoe was on his head. Like, you don't, you ain't gotta explain your relationship with my to nobody. That's not right, is it? You don't know anything about my You don't know anything about any my right? N no! Ugh. But I feel like that he's still not going to let him go even after he says no. Yeah. Even if he says no, he's still going to get hurt. It is very important to Kato. It is. It is very important. <laughs> but it's like... This time, he was kicked in the back of his thigh, sending him flying and hurting so much his throat became stiff. If I decide to do something, I see it through to the end. I'll keep at this until you correct yourself. I won't stop even if you stop breathing. Okay, so he's the one who killed him in 2003. Ugh. <laughs> Poor thing. You must be thirsty. Let's get you some water. Samajima <laughs> Satoru, how could you allow this to happen? How could you not, not allow this? I mean, yeah, how could you let this how could you suffer this to happen how could you just uh, just give him a free secluded space <laughs> for, for I think I would do this to, uh, to your beloved to okay folks come on now good morning bro Satoru where are we listen well from now on you will undergo training to truly become Mamiya. What do you mean? Don't worry, it's nothing difficult. Samajima loudly released a rabbit on the floor. A rabbit? Wait, it looks sick. We gotta feed. I hate this so much. Uh, I hate it. I hate this. Okay, so Samajim was the reason behind his uncontrollable violent tendencies. Ah, how did I not? How did I not expect this? How did I not expect this? I should have known this. I should have known this. They really threw you off when realizing that, like, when they revealed that Arisungawa was the one who implanted my Mia into Keito, not Keito, into Kikuchiryo. You were kind of, and Samajima has no connection to any of the mami, well not no connection, but no direct influence on any of the mamias that were created. You kind of didn't realize the obvious comparison between his very brutal violent urges and, you know, his uh, murderous tendencies. Uh huh? This should be easy. This should be an easy task for Mamiya, no? What are you saying? No! Take me back home! 
Kikuchi tried to stand up and run. Samizu's long, slender leg was in his way. You have no right to refuse. What would you do to go back home anyway? There is no one who will protect you. No, Mamiya! Osamu, help! We're allowing it me, not him. Kikuchi threw a tantrum and tried to run away. But Samajima grabbed his tiny body from behind him. From behind. <laughs> no! No! Stop! Oh dear, don't be feisty. He groaned in pain with his tight grip, then stopped struggling as he lost the strength to do so. <laughs> Hustling in pain, his eyes led to twitching rabbits. We cannot escape anyway. Within the blood vessels of his transparent ears, he saw a shared destiny. You are weak and unfit for society. You will never be able to reach an understanding with others through words. The only type of communication you can manage is a simple one. A very primal method indeed. Oh, you mustn't look away. Look closely and remember this fact. Words are utterly powerless against violence. I brought you food. Eat. You will die if you don't. Mm. Oh gosh, okay. I'm also remembering things that we learned about Kikuchi before. One, when we made, when Natsume made dinner for him that one time. Yeah, it was. It wasn't downfall. Yeah, when Natsume made dinner for Nats, when Natsume made dinner for Dio and downfall, he didn't. He said he didn't like. He didn't like things entering into his body. He didn't like things entering into his mouth. Mouth. So, I'm assuming that Samaji Masatsuru, just from this fact, that he's going force feed Kikuchi Ryo to eat so he will keep his immortal Mamiya you know since he's he would probably um, re refuse to eat um, and also he also said that um, when they went to the hotel he couldn't sleep he, he can't sleep in places um, whose smell he doesn't recognize so we left that place and we, you know, had a sweet moment underneath the stars. Um, so I'm guessing that also being taken suddenly to this strange place filled with these, you know, horrible conditions is probably what caused that as well. Okay, so on the floor, on the floor, he placed a roast beef like meat covered in reddish brown sauce. I'll leave it here. Samajima left the room and some time passed. I'm guessing he didn't eat it. Okay, so he might have eaten it. At this point, he might have eaten it. Joe could only fight his hunger for a few hours after that. <sighs> he couldn't look away from the meat. He took it in his hands and began appetizing the food. Wait. Oh, wait. He took it in his hands and began eating the appetizing food. Hunger was the greatest spice, and the joy he gained from his, this meal was one rarely experienced. <sighs> right? <sighs> I feel so sad for Dio. <sighs> oh, you ate it. Was it good? You seem to have enjoyed it. I'm, I'm, I don't want to know what meat that was. I really hope that meat was just something that people typically eat. But given Samajima... It might have been some foul. <laughs> Say, Ryo. <laughs> okay, I have two. I have two guesses. I have two guesses. It's either the rabbit that he killed, or, and this is even. This, I don't even want to think about this. I'm guessing Arisengawa, maybe at this point Arisengawa has already killed uh, Suo Keito underneath his torture. He said he wouldn't even stop even if he stopped breathing. 
I really, 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 really hope that they don't, that he won that meat, but they didn't take his, his corpse and, you know, cook it. Whose meat do you think that was? <laughs> See you until the next meal. Ugh. That question resounded in his head. Okay, so it's the rabbit. Rabbit makes the most sense. He, he did give a precedent to that, actually. He did say that the meat mom, the rabbit might want you to eat him. Okay, so the rabbit's still pretty messed up, but at least it ain't a person. For all you know, a rabbit, the rabbits may want you to eat them. <laughs> he puked a little in the edge of the room. No. No. Listen to this filled every inch of this space. Showing resistance was an option, but when people realized it was futile, they gave, simply gave up. It was a far, e it was far easier to silently accept the state of things. Resistance was tiring. It was better to just stay in this room. I mustn't run. I can't run. Kikuchiriho, what are you saying? Of course you can run. I really want to tell this page and delete those words. Watching something so terrible unfold while being able to... Mm. Watching something unterrible unfold while being unable to do a thing is beyond irritating. If only someone could save you. Okay, still Kato okay, still alive at this point. Good, 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 good. <sighs> Even so, still Kato okay, refused to give up and continued to crawl on his bound limbs. Okay, so you can do it even though I know you don't. <laughs> I need to get away from here as soon as possible. What? Is someone there? What? Who's there? The voice seemed to belong to a scared child. No surprise, Kato tried to remain calm. Uh, are you locked in here too? R run away from with me. Yeah, run away with him. I won't run. But why? Why, Kikuchiro? <laughs> I, I gotta become a Mia. What did people in this place think my Mia was? What's your name? Real. For a moment, there was a strange sound akin to scratch and ice. Bro. I'm so okay, to Just remember that. Okay. So, well. Okay. I did say that this. So, so okay, to having deja vu. Not so, so, so okay, though. Um. Kikuchiro having a deja vu of me and Zuo Keito could it be the timelines overlapping? And that could still be the case since we have direct evidence that Samaji Masatoru um, remembers a grown up Kikuchiro um, in 1999. But it could also, in, in the case of uh, Zuo Keito given uh, your deja vu, it could also be the fact that he remembers me and a man. Okay, though, you know, as a child, I'll do what I can to save at least you. You're keeping a child here as well, aren't you? Oh, you saw him. What's with him? I told him he must become Mamiya. What are you people doing here? Uh oh, the music just stopped. Wanna meet him? Huh? Oh. Oh, this, this hurts me so much. Oh. Oh my gosh.
Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh. I mean, it's it's bittersweet seeing them see each other like this is sweet, but the circumstances are so bad. It is it's such a beautiful scene. <sighs> the door opened like it was nothing. The time that flowed between them was oddly dense. They stopped breathing, and it felt as if each blank carried a jewel of several light years. They almost wanted to do this. They almost wanted for this to last forever. Yeah, me too. I was just like, just let the moment exist. But we have to continue. Kato. The youthful voice brought him back to his senses. Listen, Ro. This is a friend who's going to live with you from now on. The voice behind Kato made the child in front of him turn stiff as a stature. Mr. Arisungawa? What are you... What was the smell of iron coming off the door? What were they making this child do here in this blood-soaked room? Oh, have you already met? A clear voice could be heard from, like, a clear voice could be heard within the darkness when it seemed to almost crawl on the ground. Summit Jima? Oh yeah, I guess he didn't never realize that Summit Jima was here. Oh, this is so terrible. The familiar face briefly filled him with relief, but then Keita became alert. Why are you here? Kate? Why is an officer involved in something like this? His body trembled and boiled in anger. You think this is okay? The chagrin welling up within him made Kito cry, but he did his best to hold back the tears. They seemed to hit Samajima hard. Of course not. Then why are you? I don't believe this is an emotion you can understand. But I've always been scared of deviating from societal norms. Hmm. I didn't become an officer for the justice that you believed in. I did it because I was a coward who could only ever choose this role. I felt comfortable with a position that involved hating evil and arresting the guilty. It put me at ease. But some things are worth throwing all that away for. I don't think this is one. <laughs> Such as? For real, please elaborate. Samajima placed a hand on the child's shoulder and smiled. I cannot give up on Mamiya. Even if I lose everything, I want to see the ominous rainbow once again. Upon waking, he felt the warmth of a child next to him. K <clears throat> Kato, you are unconscious. Are you okay? Kuchiryo was huddling up to him in a way so not so as not to flare up the wounds he received from Arisungawa. Yeah, I am. He gently put his hand on the boy, careful not to scare the child. He was small and cold. When he noticed the light shaking in Keto's hand, he gently held it back. Why are you so polite with me? Huh? You're an adult, so it's kind of strange. Good point. To be honest, I'm not sure myself. Despite the fatigue, the nostalgia made him smile. It just feels right to talk to you that way. Within his aftertaste, he gathered his resolve. Ryo, let's run away from here, okay? The bewilderment made his honey-colored eyes quiver. No. He slowed to refuse. I won't run. His strange fixation on that felt off to Kato. But, but why? There's no point. They'll catch us anyway. But that's... 
There's no point. No matter how much I don't want it, the rabbit still died. Because of me, it died by my hands. So I gathered on his back. The reek of blood he smelled upon. The reek of blood he smelled upon coming into his room was caused by animal blood. Layers upon layers of brainwashing and violence that stripped the boy of his will to run. Oh, poor baby. Oh, poor baby. I'm here too. You? We might be able to run away if we're together. Please. <laughs> he held the child's shoulders tight. Listen, bro. Please don't give up. His amber eyes shifted from the color of fatigue to bewilderment. You shouldn't be in a place like this. Kato couldn't put much strength into his arms, but he brought the boy close regardless. You shouldn't become the Mamiya they want you to be. To convey his feelings and warmth, he pulled the boy into a weak embrace. This might have been a selfish kind of justice, but he hoped that it would make his life at least a bit better. What will you do if you get out of here? Mm, well, there were many things he wanted to do. He wanted to eat a lot and to sleep in a safe and clean bed. He wanted to turn Arisingawa and Samajim into the police and have them punished, and he wanted to see his parents. However, he felt that none of these would, un none of these would help lift the boy's spirits. Oh, the letters have been going back for a long time. And then, like, the letters have always been a constant. Have always been a constant. So it's like, hmm. I wonder if they, um, like, it's a, it's a canon event, I guess. <laughs> the letters are canon. Like, it has to happen between them. That's because it did happen and they passed. Oh, yeah. I'll write letters. Letters? Yes. To you. Why? Because I don't want you to hate the world. Oh. Those words came from the heart. I want you to know that this world is full of kindness, warmth, and all kinds of wonderful things. I'll travel across the world and discover all the fun things I can. I'll tell you about them in my letter and ask you to tell me about yours. Such as... On just about the other side of this planet, there's a rainbow-colored mountain. Really? It's in a country called Peru. Getting up the mountain is hard, but the view is very beautiful. I'm going to Peru this, uh, this summer. Let me see, rainbow-colored mountain. Peru. It's called Vinicunca. Vinicunca. Also called Montaña de Siete Colores. Mountain of Seven Colors. It is very pretty. Oh my gosh. It's pretty. I don't think I'll be able to see this when I go to Peru this summer. But I would like to. I'll take a photo of it someday and send it to you. I want to see it. I knew you would. There's so, so many fun things everywhere. I wonder if I can write a good reply. Don't worry. It doesn't have to be good. Right. Let's share what's happening to us, even if we're distant. We'll tell each other that everything's all right and confirm that both of us are alive. But for that to happen, we need to get away from here. By the time the two became tired and fell asleep, the door opened and the light flooded in. Keep quiet. We're all sleeping. Whoa, playing Papa Bear, huh? I think I'm gonna cry. I won't let you have your way. Why do you think we put you in the same room even though you could escape? You must have realized about now, right? 
This is the room where animals are killed and prepared. The room where Ryo will become the perfect Mamiya. Okay, um... I'm also confused. <laughs> Why is it that Arisugawa's Osamu is so willing to participate in Samaji Masatoru's project? His Mamiya was none like this. Um, his Mamiya, she was nice. She was nice. She was, um, encouraging. I don't know. She was, she was just not this. She was not whatever Satoru Samajima had in mind of a Mamiya. So why are you so okay with creating this Mamiya? How come this is the perfect Mamiya, not the one that you knew? Kato turned pale. He understood what would happen here. He wished he hadn't. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! No! 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 no, no. He wished he hadn't. But now he understood what Kikuchi would do to him. Okay, so I was on the right track. He did. He did kill. So I was on the right track that he did kill Suo Kato. But it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't at that, you know, the other um, crime scene that he mentioned. Masashi Hashirazo, 64 year old worker. It wasn't then, it was at this place. Oh my gosh. This is so terrible. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh goodness gracious. Oh goodness gracious. He wish he hadn't. Okay, I read that already. You! His body trembled with fear and anger as his teeth continued to chatter. Have you even thought about the mental strain that would put on him? I think I made a bit of scowl and stopped Kate from speaking. Again, why is Arisengawa on this plan? This is not the Mamiya that you knew. So why, do you, why are you helping this? For a soon-to-be corpse, you sure are loud. Kato? Oh my god. Bro. Oh. You should be honored, Suo Kato. With your death, Kikujiro's mommy will be complete. His ears were buzzing. He heard the ragged breathing of a child. Now, do as I taught you. <sighs> His breath echoing through the darkness of warmth. No touch was needed to know that. A sin from some other time was touching his immobilized body. The smell of salty sea. Salt sea water. So cold it hurt. How sad. This must be painful. You want to run away as soon as you can. <sighs> no matter how much it hurts, you mustn't run away. If you swing it, though, it'll make you feel a bit better. The invisible darkness changed its shape. <sighs> it sounded about to use muscles. I had a feeling that he probably killed him the exact same way that we saw that Suoketo died at the end of Downfall. I wish it wasn't so, but it is. And so, Kikuchi Ryo stabbed Suoketo in the stomach. God! The serum pain made him scream so loud it threatened to tear his vocal cords. 
feeling of the stab was conveyed by the intrusive feeling of the blade in the flesh. It was hot, far too hot. The pain was so acute that Keto, that Keto, felt like he would be twisted in half. Ah! Ah! <sighs> now, once more. Suddenly, Kikuchiryo's body twitched with intense reject, twitched with intense rejection. No, no, I don't want to stop. I don't want to kill him. He'll die. But what if you still want me to run away? Th then I, 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 I was about to point the survival knife at himself, but then an adult arm took him, took it away from him. Let's stop there. Okay, Samajima. Very well. He seemed to be not fully there, but agreed regardless. He's bleeding bad. He'll die eventually anyway. Then let's come back at dawn. Are you sure, E.D.? Didn't you say you love seeing the exact moment when people die? I did? I sure said some awful things back then. Oh my gosh. You don't say. After throwing a glance at Suo Keito, rather than agony, Samajima closed the door. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that Samajima Sotiru went from trying to spare Suo Keito from the wrath of Arisinawa to creating the very tool that will kill Suo Keito. Keito! I'm so sorry. Please don't die. And I leave him there. It's terrible. It's terrible. Real. Listen. The boy took his hand and nodded as firmly as he could. Let's run away. Together. Let's do it, bro. We can. And nothing good will come from it. Samajima. I purposely forgot to lock the door. I think this may be our final chance. It's a test. It always had a weakness for me. <laughs> okay. Even so, he did this. I just can't. But you're bleeding so much. Bro. Keto touched the boy's cheek with a hand cover in the blood from his stomach. Let's run! Please don't die. I won't. Thanks. Keto wanted nothing more, to, more than to let the boy escape. That day was very cold and had a record breaking snowfall. The two went out in light clothing. And the tense fragments, intense fragments of frost covered them until they were cloaked in white. White. <sighs> it was not more than it was more than enough to slow down a wounded youth and a small child. You mustn't run away. <sighs> Within this world of white and silver, he felt as though someone was reaching from behind to grab his shoulder. He couldn't run away. <sighs> he couldn't run away, and yet. It's snowing, it's snowing so hard. Are you cold? I'm fine. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Kato's blood kept spilling out, goodness gracious. And every step made his unconsciousness fade. Don't worry. We'll run away and survive. I'm sure of it. Even so, he kept up a smile to reassure the boy and continued in the direction of where he expected to find people. I will protect you, no matter what. He tightly embraced the boy with his teeth as his teeth were chattering. Let's keep going. Their silhouettes were followed by a crimson trail made by the wound. They 
crept into a grove to stay warm. Uh, I'm guessing this is where he um, lost his life. However, yeah, the sheer volume of his blood loss made him collapse on the spot. Kato! We gotta keep going! We gotta get you to a hospital! Kato, come on! I won't die. He extended his hands and embraced the boy. He wanted to protect him from the evil blizzard. Oh, this is so sad. Okay, everything's gonna be okay. He brought the boy's head closer to his chest and did his best to speak in a warm tone. <sighs> <sighs> Little boy of the back, um, through the back of the boy's head, he felt the trembling of his jaw. He might have no longer had the strength to face the blizzard. Which I know. Mm mm mm. Mm, mm, mm. His consciousness turned hazy. His hearing had grown weaker as well, as his own heartbeat made the pain flare up. Every breath seemed to scatter, um, every breath seemed to shatter more and more of his hopes. I'm gonna die, he thought. Ah, uh, there seemed to be no end to the snow. In fact, his back, in fact, his back gradually turned wet from the layer of snow piling up on it. He felt as though cold water was gathering to his feet and gradually reached his throat. The countdown to his death wasn't stopping. I'm gonna die. I'm cold. The voice from within his arms made him open his eyes wide. Who will protect them? He wondered. The feeling that he, ha the feeling he had, wait, the feeling he'd once felt toward those who were weaker than him, it brought back a warmth deep within his heart. When we get home, this, cus this husky voice was anything but reassuring, but it was the best he could do. I'll write letters, lots and lots of letters. It was to give him hope for life. Where can we go? A warm place would be nice. A tropical island. A, a palm trees. <sighs> it was so that his future would continue. There are so many fun things waiting for us. There's so, there's so much that the world wants to tell. To both you and me. Hey, tell you. I'll write letters. So you won't be lonely. Even when you go even when you go back home. Hey! Are you okay? Uh, the ambulance is closed. Put this on. Hang in there. Over here, there's a, a there's an adult and a child. Kato. Upon waking up at the hospital, Kikuchiryo was by himself. You're Kikuchiryo, right? We are the police. We're on your side. You understand? Yes. I'm sorry, the shock must have been really bad, but we would like to know what happened that day. Kikuchiryo? I don't know. Oh, what happened because I ran away? He thought. I 
don't really know. It's because I ran away that he... I don't remember much of what happened back then. I shouldn't have run. It was the morning after that night. Kikuchi and Zuo were found on the slower path. Two youths lit by the morning sun. The cold form of children with futures. Suo Keito was embracing Kikuchi Ryo, protecting him from the snow. I guess this is how the works of Rubens looks at, and wait. I guess this is how the works of Rubens look outside of painting. Suo Keito's side profile was shining. No matter how beautifully you try to describe it, a corpse was a corpse. Seeing them as divine was sacrilege toward the dead. But what was sublime here? They rage, indignation, sadness, and helplessness. Or they feeling died at once. It took witness and a death, but they finally came to their senses. Goodbye. Yeah. That went to. <laughs> Excuse me? That winter morning, the two swore to never meet again. Y'all have some nerve to just, hmm. This, yeah, um, let's just never see each other again and never talk about this ever. And then just walk away after that. Just, excuse me. Excuse me? And that's how it went. Do you remember now? Oh, you're unconscious. I suppose I rushed a little. Up you go. Oh, gosh. Samajima Satoru picked up Kikuchiryo's unconscious body and bit his large frame to get him out the ferris wheel. Where's Midori? Like... <laughs> I'm guessing that Samajima went to tell him... Oops. That was an accident. I'm guessing Samajima went to tell him... I think I went to tell... Um, what's that boy's name? Suo Keito. But Midori's there with them too. I hope she ain't here all that. Please. Okay, I didn't read the original text, let me see. He left the amusement park with a smile on his face, Kikuchiro in his arms. You up. I just remembered that he's carrying Midori, who's also sleeping. How charming that both brother and sister took an afternoon nap. I'll take you to your home then. No need to worry. I'll pick you up later. I'm still confused how he has these memories though. As he was being carried, Kikuchiryo was actually somewhat conscious. He could feel the dark clouds above covering the amusement park. He could also feel the atmosphere being heavy with moisture. And he could even feel this man handling him more gently than he expected. Even so, he wasn't able to fully wake up. After all, doing so would cause an immense flood of memories to overwhelm him. The floodgates of the dam he had been subconsciously maintaining were opened by Samajima Satoru. Placed between memories like compressed earth and lead, he found himself barely able to barely able to breathe. The year of his death, two thousand and three. Okay, well. I think we're halfway finished, right? Since I think there's like about eight chapters in these sides. And we just had a bomb shell just released on us. <laughs> we had a bomb shell released on us just now. So I feel like that. This is a wonderful place to take a break. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Uh, it's 
kind of reminds me of um yeah now you know what happened <sighs> mm. this kind of reminds me of a uh Danganronpa fan game called Danganronpa Another yeah well the series is called Danganronpa Another um but it's Danganronpa Another 1 and Super Danganronpa Another 2 I won't say anything in um, say anything s super spoilery because you know you know maybe you might want to check it out sometime but it's like it's one of the most popular fan games in the Danganronpa in the Danganronpa um in the Danganronpa um fan game community like it's and it's completely finished both one and two but one of the characters in the second game kind of is like this not exactly like this but the idea that they will turn into like some type of killing machine um and but they have but those memories of them killing you know is a blocked out they have no memory of that and like a release from from they from them killing is um cause them to have like you know memory issues like they have selective amnesia surrounding that like they turn to a different person it kind of reminds me of that um but yeah that's that's just what i thought of um but yeah this was ugh. i'm so sad i'm so sad what did what why did our little baby deal have to undergo that? He was, he was a small child. I'm sad. Anyway, anyway, um, I'm gonna ruminate on that. Let myself calm down. It will come back to play on Monday. Um, like again, usual. Um, on Wednesday will be nameless. We'll play a nameless. Um, one thing you must recall. And then we'll pl play um, Our Life Begins and Always on Friday. And then we will play um, Forest of Dress and Rain on Sunday. I was moving back into my dorm after some spring break yesterday, so I didn't stream yesterday. So we'll continue that again this uh, Sunday. And I'm going to try to eat <laughs> and like eat the popcorn I have in my room. And I don't know, take my mind off of what I just listened to, <laughs> make myself happy again. And uh, yeah, cause that was, I'm sad. I need to, I need to, I need to um, eat a snack and maybe watch some, I don't know, watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> but thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all very kindly, much obliged. And I will see y'all again later. Y'all come back now, you heard me. Bye.